chapter five of a christmas when the west was young by cyrus townsend brady this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter five the ride and the light this overwhelming tragedy fraught with such consequences to this modern samaritan had occupied scarcely ten minutes yet it had changed the course of life for him he rode more carefully now but urged his horse on until he reached that part of the rift where it was necessary to leave it and strike straight across the prairie to his home on clear days he could distinguish the hill rising above the rolling country that morning however he could see but a few miles ahead off to the south the direction in which he must go the air was filled with a strange unearthly whiteness the wind had momentarily died down but as he stared ahead he felt a faint puff or two against his face the air suddenly seemed desperately cold and scattered flakes fell on the dark fur of his sleeve he had scarcely time to mark them before the air was filled with snow and the storm broke around him with tremendous force the word blizzard had not yet been invented but the thing it signifies is very old this was such a storm as he had never in all his life experienced he had time to mark but one thing that the storm came straight from the point at which he aimed landmarks were obliterated as if rubbed out by a mighty hand the whirling snow beat upon him the shrieking wind ripped and tore at him the earth seemed to rock and quiver beneath the feet of the horse it was as if the man and the beast were fighting a battle against some titanic force what kept him up was the thought of the terror and anxiety of that woman waiting upon the hill in the very heart of the driving tempest that and the remembrance of the other little life lying at his breast as he struggled on he took the nubia of which he had thought so whimsically and wrapped it about his face covering all of it except his right eye which he could protect a little if he turned the left side of his face to the wind he was deeply thankful for that fantastic foolish scarf before he got through that day he reasoned at first clearly enough for the cold had not yet benumbed him he knew that his direction lay in the teeth of the storm he put his whole mind therefore on forcing the horse into the very jaws of the tempest sometimes he would stop and strive to listen and look but it was impossible there was nothing to do but plod blindly forward he had never before used the whip and spur on that brave horse but now he drove him on and on the raw flesh quivering under lash and rowel he did not spare himself any more than he spared the horse the cold penetrated to the very bone and dulled the man's senses he ceased to think or to reason but because he had so impressed upon his mind a certain purpose he followed it instinctively and somewhat of his purpose seemed to be communicated to his horse for at length he did not strive as he had at first to turn his back he put his head down and plodded slowly on for how many minutes for how many hours the man could not tell the reins at last fell from his numbed fingers at the same time the horse stopped the cessation of the movement aroused the man by a desperate effort he summoned his will-power back to life he lifted his head and stared about him the storm did not beat upon him with quite such terrific force as before the tempest did not appear to be abating but it was as if he had found some kind of shelter he strove to think what it could be finally as if impelled he lifted his eyes upward there before him in the gray darkness of the day what hour it was he did not know although he dully perceived that it was growing dark he saw a light just a spot of pale yellow radiance in the snow-filled air was it a real light he drew the nubia from his face to see with both eyes ay it was a blurred wavering glimmer but it was a light could it be a star a star had led the wise men of old across the world he remembered vaguely that it was christmas day yes that was a light a light just above him he must inquire into it he must see what it was he must get near to it he spoke to the horse again and struck and spurred him there was no response 
the brave animal was done for he could carry his burden no longer the man reflected quickly in spite of the excruciating pain involved in the descent he managed to slip from the saddle still holding the snow-covered bundle closely to his breast he seized the bridle with his benumbed left hand and staggered forward the poor horse relieved of his burden made a valiant effort to follow and horse and man stumbled up a gentle ascent the light grew brighter it was crossed by bars of some kind no it was not a star it came through a window the window of a house what house he could see the corners of the logs through the snow where there was a window there should be a door instinctively he turned toward it and fell heavily against it and lay there the bundle close to his breast the horse's bridle still clutched in his freezing hand End of chapter five